you put in. Amen. Okay, so thank you. You're welcome. Use that one yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. How's everyone doing? Uh, first, I want to say thank you, Father, for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for who you are. Lord, I thank you so much that when you made a plan to rescue us, it was done with excellence. No mistake. Your heart fully dedicated to save their precious children. Lord, I thank you so much for that spirit of excellence. I thank you so much for that spirit of compassion. I thank you that you have mercy on us. Continue to build us up in Jesus' name. Lord, may we never be complex in the name of Jesus. May we be even better than Apostle Paul for we go from glory to glory to glory. Lord, we thank you that you stretch us, that everything that you put in our hand, we will do it with all our might in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I come against any spirit of complacency, any spirit of mediocrity. And Lord, we call on excellence, hard work, wits, walking hard. And doing it with joy because we appreciate our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I'm I'm also I'm saying greeting to the the Bible school in the in the Philippines. So we have some people from the Philippines also watching this. So hello everyone. And then uh, we do have uh, all the young people watching this. Some of them, they're from 15 years old to 21 years old. Sold out for the Lord. And they're all here online, some from Australia, just loving God. I love to hang out with those, those guys. There's a, there's a young lady from Australia. She's always, hello, Bishop Phillips from Kenya. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? Oh, phenomenal. What time is it there? Time is uh, 4, 4, 4 a.m. morning. That's my kind of people. 4 a.m. in the morning is right there. <laughs> Lord, may the Lord bless you, Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one thing I notice is there are people that are totally sold out for the Lord. Totally sold out for the Lord. You see the life, it will literally put you to shame. While we are playing, we are not playing. And we are saying to the Lord, you are truly my Lord. A pure heart of adoration. I always say this, one of the biggest mistakes in the body of Christ right now is to think that worship is to be right there at the piano or singing. That's actually not worship. The definition of worship is submission. Is to back in adoration and submission. That's actually the true Hebrew definition of worship. When Jesus ascended to heaven, they say he ascended and then they worshiped him. They were not singing, <laughs> they were bowing. It's like coming to a king and you bow in reverence and you say to that king, what do you want me to do? Is that level of power? Amen. Mm -hmm. There are people who work hard for the Lord. I mean, work hard for the Lord. I met some of these kind of people. They challenged me. I said, Lord, don't leave me behind. I cannot have mediocrity in my life when people like that work for me. It's the essence. When you ask them, why do you do that? They say, because I love God. That's the answer. Because I love it. I said, wow. I said, Lord, don't leave me behind. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Bishop Philip, may the Lord bless you. 
we are putting a phenomenal team to come to Kenya. April 16, Kisimu shall be shaken by the power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wait, wait, yes, waiting, wait, waiting, yes, on April, waiting on April. It's going to be awesome. Amen. It's be awesome. There's a few more people coming. We have been since last time we met us. The Lord has been just walking with us Tuesday after Tuesday after Tuesday after uh -huh. Tuesday. I don't uh -huh. even remember the last time we took a break. Uh -uh. <laughs> and then no, we somebody got disrespectful. Amen. Uh, uh, Jordan. Yes. Can you please mute the people there? Hallelujah. The team just came from Honduras. Welcome to Honduras. It was wonderful. And the testimony is the Lord told me to go to New York. How did you not want to go to New York? But he said, go to New York. And I went to New York, met the pastor from England. And they told me about the outreach. They told me, what? They showed me how you guys do it. So he started to talk. Then he told me, let's go to this community. Let me see if there's something that can be done there. I said, no problem. We go there to the community. I said, yes, I will do this, 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 that. And we go to the community center. The chairman of the community center see us in calls. And um, as we go in, we realize he's a believer. Love the Lord, speak about Jesus. And uh, he told us how he has been working for the community for the community for almost 20 years, never took a vacation. I said, Brother, you need to take a vacation, you need to rest a little bit. And he tell us this is his birthday. The woman he said, That's my birthday. The Lord said, Give me $500 for his birthday. I said, Sir, you have cash up, you gave me $500. No, no, that didn't open the door for something major. And that will create all the stuff after that. He goes, Let me show, let me show you the community. Sir. And he showed us the crowd and everything. Then he looked at me and says, look, what can I do for you? And right away, the Lord told me, that was a truth. The Lord told me, ask for the gym. I said, well, I would love to have this gym on Saturday. He said, normally it takes many days to apply. I said, I'll be quiet. Will you ask me? I want it for Saturday. And uh, finally, on Thursday, we gave the approval. For the gym on Saturday to go on average, we only had one day and a half. The flyer, 540 people show up. It was amazing. Me, after that, I was thinking myself to have The pastor was so happy. Then the Lord told me, go to Connecticut. I'm thinking, hey, Connecticut. And this thing was just happening like that. Go to Connecticut. So I'm thinking I'm going to Connecticut. To see where I've been before. Then the pastor from England called me and says, Hey, uh, on your way to Waterbury, can you stop in Stanford? The apostle, my apostle, I told you about you, just go and say hello to him. So we go there, turn out they have 287 churches, wonderful men, wonderful men of God. Hard work. We go there on Wednesday. And we are talking, we're talking, we're talking. He looked at me and said, Mr. Paul, what a Paul, what do you want to do? I said, Pastor, if you're the pastor, what do you want to do? And he said, well, I can't think right now, I'm too tired. And then we talked again. Then he stopped me and goes, While you were talking, I just took a nap. I'm ready now. Well, I can read you a flyer right now for Saturday. I said, Praise God, let's do it. We did the flyer, flyer for two days. 750 people show up in the building. We broke every code in that person. We had to keep up many people. It was, God did something amazing. It was, oh my Lord. And we finished the outreach. We trained the people. We, we rest for one hour. We trained the church. We rest one hour, we try a lot, 
the, the church again, he has a big church, he has about uh, uh, 287 church, wonderful man. Then he goes, Brother Paul, I'm going to take some of this material and bring them to Honduras, my country, because I have about, he has about 40 churches in Honduras, his, uh, his area, and hundreds in Latin America. And out of my spirit, I just said to the pastor, so why take the material when you take people? He said, well, that's actually what I want. And that's how we send the team. They pay everything. And this year, the Lord told us, this year is a year of bold steps. It's for people that will take bold steps. Bold means it's a step you never took before. Bold mean that step you saved, but you still have to take it. <laughs> Amen. If you want to see his glory this year, now if you don't want to see his glory, then stay the same. No problem. <laughs> Amen. It's bold step. So that's how the team, like uh, Jordan, who was a team leader, just say, hey, Jordan, in 10 days you go to Honduras. Yes, sir. That's it. Let's you know they on the last seven day to say thousands of hundreds and hundreds of people being saved. Amazing. They were supposed to do how many, how many outreaches? Two? Two. The next you know they're doing part to say. Now we are receiving four to go to the whole Central America. That's our call. Can we do what we do right now to the whole Central America? In one week and a half, a team is going to Guatemala. After that, a team went to Guatemala. And then the Murad, the, the other team, they just named 80 right now. We bought the land, we had bought by a land for pastors there. In 80 right now. When they come back, Guatemala, and then in two weeks and a half, right? There's a Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Ghana, and Ghana. That's what the Lord told us. This year, both that, and this year is the year of international power. All I can say is this I don't know what the Lord told you, but if you ever, if you never believed him, this is the time to believe him. This is the time to believe him. This is the time to take that step. Hallelujah. This is the time. I'm telling you. I, I said to people, if, 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 if you don't take it in 2021, I was saying, if you don't take it, I don't know when it's going to come back again. I don't know if the opportunity will come back again. I don't know. There are some people, I'm going to show you a video what happened in the past six months. There are some people that were supposed to follow me, but they never did. And literally, they told us, God said, to come, see if God told you. Come. Oh no, you know I have to do this. I come better. Now they left them behind. Behind. Like completely behind. Even if they want to come, they feel burden. Because the team is just in a whole other run at this point. They cannot function at the level. He just came from Honduras. The day that he came from Honduras, he was in Manassas flying. <laughs> Airport. The next day, try it. Let's go. Because we have two outreaches this week. The whole thing, that's why it will not come because right now they walk in the cold outside, walking. Because of the two outreaches. Amen. If there ever be a time, promise me. The time is now. That time to sit down with the Lord. It's a law concerning what you don't. First, I repent. Because God is never wrong and never late. But help me. But I'm telling you, if you take both steps, you will just be like, Lord, I'm just going to believe. I'm just going to be crazy and believe you. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So let's start with the video. Uh, first, I want to say thank you so much for having us. It's always a pleasure to see you. So thank you. Play the video, please. And on Zoom, too.
Hallelujah. This is just the past 
smart. So what God has done. So explain the door to you. So I knocked on this door yesterday, but I was praying for her. She started crying. Like I can see that she started receiving it. Like in her eyes, like I had a lot of compassion for her. I told him that God loves him. He will never leave him. And like she was just staying with the church. And I'm just looking at her. Like, I asked her, like, would you like to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior? She didn't even think about it. She's like, yes. Quick. I'm like, okay. thing that um, I like to say to people when I do this training is this. If you are set, set in your heart that you're not going to serve the Lord, this is the right time to leave the room. Amen. The reason why I'm saying that is because God will hold you accountable to the knowledge that he gave you. Amen. For me, the moment God showed me something, you just have to do it. Because if you hold your tongue, 
So many times it's, it's better not to even know. Jesus said it was better that it's not even more, you know. So what the Lord is doing is to walk of the heart. It has nothing to do with the logistic, although we want to show you a lot of logistic. Let's show you walk of the heart. Amen. Many of these things we discover them before we were on, on our knees and say, Lord, your souls. Lord, your souls. Lord, what is in your heart? And he kept saying, souls. Souls. <clears throat> then things have to come. Every time we ask wisdom to the Lord concerning his kingdom, we will give you wisdom. You got a question. So you have to settle in your heart that you will take what is being given and use it to glorify the name of the Lord. If your heart doesn't want to do it, just put it right there. No problem. It's no, nothing personal. Amen. And I've said this is kind of because I love people and I don't want them to have a problem with the Lord. It's best we don't do it. Amen. It's really, really best we don't do it, especially right now. We've been seeing some stuff happening to people who were playing games with the glory of the Lord in our team. Playing games. Unfortunately, a young man died. Oh. <clears throat> he was at the Bible study all the time. And then the, the, the young prophet kept telling him, God has a great plan for your life. But it seems that the devil is after you. Why don't you come to the team? I don't know. Sometimes I can't see things bad is happening. He would not listen. He would not listen. 16 years old. Did not obey the Lord. His friend came and said, Let's go have some fun. They took the few hundred, I think it was a few hundred and fifty Z, something like that. Nissan. Which I'm thinking, what kind of time buy such a fast car for 16 years old? Full of privilege. What do you think is going to do with that car? So they take the car, they drive at 140 miles per hour. What you pass the car, yeah. instantly. And the guy who brought him in that car survived. Now the parents, they need to be prayed. Now we have to pray for home. So, really, when that thing happened, it, it does something. Especially when you know you're being warned in the chat. It does something to your heart. We always preach, you don't have, there's no guarantee for tomorrow. Even when we push that, you know, we still believe, well, I'm going to wake up tomorrow, but then something like that happens, you realize the, the reality of that. There's no guarantee for tomorrow. Amen? You may just have, once again, you may just have one day. Serve the Lord. And I'm saying this because that's how I talk to people now. Because when you do this kind of thing, you see a lot of stuff and you say, please take it very seriously. Amen. And I'm talking to people here too on the screen here, people are watching here. Amen. So you on Zoom, take, take this seriously. I feel the Holy Spirit wants someone to hear this. Take this seriously. And people on Zoom, you know that next week we're gonna do. Uh, the practical training for these outreaches. So next week we're going to have tens and twenty two outreaches happen around the world. We're very excited. Amen. So let's let's uh, go to the first slide. Okay. And uh, Amen, Tanisha, you're welcome anytime. So let's go. Um, to share the screen on Zoom. So we're going to go to the first slide. <clears throat> So how to do a Zoom outreach? How to do a Zoom outreach? When um, uh, Strobel called me to do a training here, uh, we were all doing a training uh, with other people around the world, and I thought it was fitting to show the Zoom outreach. Okay? Next slide. <clears throat> now let me give you a, a little bit of background how the Zoom outreach came about. I was in New York City when uh, there was a pandemic. And New York City was empty. I mean, I'm talking about empty. So I'm in Brooklyn and I said to the Lord, Lord, there is no way uh, COVID can outsmart you. There is no way. 
and people are still dying there or people need to be saved. And I say, Lord, we are the one not listening. We keep thinking the traditional way. So Father, I ask for wisdom. And the Lord said, to zoom out. I said, zoom out. What in the world am I going to be for zoom out? But well, that thought stayed there for three, four days. I was trying to think how this is going to work. Until I finally say, you know, I can stay here for days trying to figure out how it's going to work, or I can just believe God and believe every step that He gave me. That's when we started the Zoom outreach. It was very successful. It blew my mind. It, it really, really shocked me the success of that outreach. Hundreds of people were there on the Zoom. And uh, you know, back then, people were not opening their home. But they opened their home for us because people will bring some prize. There will be salvation on Zoom. People will call uh, for us to pray. And by the time we went to the community to distribute the prize in, uh, home by home, people knew where we really were. Simply because people were sharing the videos everywhere. Oh, it does. And it does from Zoom. I mean, it was amazing. And we baptize people in the bathtub, baptism with the Holy Ghost, and not in homes. I said, wow. <laughs> it was amazing. It takes a little bit more logistic than the typical outreach, but then it was worth it. All right. So the Zoom outreach. The Zoom outreach is very simple. The normal outreach, you want to take a flyer and bring them to a location. For the Zoom principle, is very simple. You have a player, you put them to online, to a mobile phone. So instead of having the address, it's instead the Zoom. Okay? And from the next slide. Okay. And from the Zoom, we access their home. Because if you look at the Zoom, it's really a family or a person in front of the screen. So it brings that um, uh, 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 closeness. It brings that they don't have to see a big crowd. And then right there, it's almost like you're right there in their home speaking to them. No, no, go, go back. Okay. So you, you have um, the, you have the flyer, you have the phone. They go to the Zoom, we access the screen, and then everyone will be the prize or everyone that you need to go home, you have a team that will go and distribute in their home. And those teams have to be people who know how to pray. Amen? Not just people who know how to minister. Next slide. So when you do the Zoom outreach, you collect the information just like with the regular outreach. You collect the information. Okay, I'm seeing two slides. See two people. Okay, you, you collect the information, you text them one day or one hour before the start of the Zoom of the Zoom outreach. Now, for this one, you can text them one day or sometimes even one hour, sometimes even 30 minutes before the start. And the reason is this for the regular outreach, you want to text them one day before for sure. Because in case they have plans, they can rearrange the plan. And then you text them about an hour before the event. Why? Because when you put the flyers, you may have put the flyers in maybe in the radius of 15 miles. But when it comes to the Zoom outreach, the Zoom outreach is very simple. You can even text them 10 minutes before you start. Why? Because they always have the phone. They always have the phone. The moment you text them, they can just pick up the phone, isolate themselves somewhere, and start to listen to, to the outreach, amen? So make sure that you can also watch on Facebook, live, and YouTube. Zoom allows you to put it live on Facebook and YouTube. Next slide. All right. So here again, uh, next slide, go ahead. So these are some of the things that you, you're going to need when you do a Zoom outreach. Like I said, the Zoom outreach requires a little bit more logistics. 
just slightly more logistic, um, but it's truly worth it. It's, it's, it's really phenomenal. So, you know, go back to the other slide. You will need a social media team, okay? The social media team is the people, remember you're live on Facebook, you're live on YouTube. So the social media team, what they're doing is, they are answering every one question in the comments. They're just interacting with them. They are encouraging the people to share. They're just interacting and they're asking if you have a prayer request, you can, uh, uh, people can pray. It's almost like uh, if you know this old school um, uh, Christian TV, when the person is speaking and he goes, call this number for prayer, stuff like that. So the person talking, you say, hey, we have a, a team right there who wants to pray for you. Please, if you're on Facebook, send a text, say that you need prayer. Or if you're on YouTube, send a text that you need prayer. So the social media team, that's what they do. They're interacting with these people. And they are interacting with them if they have a problem, for example. If maybe someone can say, I can't hear. If they notice that many people are saying that they cannot hear properly, then they, they talk to the production team. So there's principally three teams. The production team, the social media team, and the people presenting, amen? So they will talk, and the production team is in, the, in between all of them. So if they cannot hear, the production team can go to the computer, and find out what's the, what's, what's the problem. Okay. Now you need a premium Zoom account. It's very important when you want to do that. You're gonna need a premium Zoom account so that uh, the number, they give you more minutes, more hours actually, or unlimited hours. And also you will need good internet, fast internet, and sticky notes. Sticky notes. Let me ask you a question. Why do you need a sticky notes? And also, you can also answer that question. Why do you need sticky notes? <laughs> Someone say, reminder. I will tell you later why you need a sticky note. Yeah. But again, this thing we do not know. But it is as we were planning that we start to see problems that God has to give us the wisdom behind. Amen? So, let me just tell you, the sticky note is because when someone will the price, you want to make sure that the, the social media team or the production team knows what the price is. For example, when someone will the price, you will tell them, uh, I'll call the team right now, here's the number, to give your address. So they give the address, they call the number to verify that it's really them, and then you write on the sticky note and put it on the gate. So we know who this belongs to, and where this is going. That's why you need the sticky note. Sticky notes will really help you when it comes to a Zoom app. Amen. So then you have the production team. The production team, you're going to need an online raffle generator. When you do a regular app, it's, you have those raffle tickets. Online, you have a raffle generator software. They are free. They are free. So you can just go to Google online raffle generators. And what you do is you take the name and a portion of the phone number. You don't want to put all the phone numbers there. Who can tell me why? You don't want the phone number to be on the screen. Yes? Privacy. You don't want the guy who has been looking for that lady for years says, praise God, I have a number now. <laughs> so you don't want this kind of stuff. But enough information for them to know that we are talking about them. Amen? So the social media team, production team, uh, you need a premium Zoom account, you need good internet city note, and uh, for the production team, you need online raffle, to make the example, wheelofnames.com. Wheelofnames.com. It's a wonderful tool, it's free. Uh, it worked very well for us. Now, it's going to need good lights, very good lights. If you want to start to go um, Zoom, um, I will recommend to go on Amazon. They have like a full studio. It's just about $70. And you can just put the full studio right there in good light. Not very really expensive, but just enough. You need a good light. If you can, just find a source of light. 
Now, if it's during the day, just open your windows. Open your windows. Don't do it outside. Or if you do it outside, uh, make sure you are in a place where there's not a lot of noise or not wind. wind. Okay? But uh, do it inside is better. Uh, set up a studio like your living room, whatever it is. Make sure you can see the gift, the gift on the couch and everything. And then um, just make sure that the light can bounce on your face so you can see you. Now you need a phone with a good camera. It's an example, an iPhone, like iPhone 11, iPhone 12. Uh, just make sure, or whatever, whatever camera that you have, but just make sure it's a good camera. It's very important when you do a Zoom outreach, you, the people want to hear and they want to see. It's very important that you hear and they see. And then uh, Zoom on, on computer to make the video. So the setup is very simple. You have the camera or your phone, and you have another computer right there to miss the video. And the reason is very simple. During the outreach, you can call somewhere, someone around the world to give a testimony. For example, the one we did in New York City. Uh, the young man who gave the testimony was not in New York City. He was, I believe, back then he was in Kentucky. But you can call him on the screen. And the way you do it, you, you do a spotlight. You can do a spotlight, two spotlight, and show like the CNN where the journalist is speaking, and then you see another video of the person responding. So it's called a spotlight. So you can do that. And then, next slide. So this is um, a typical order of service when it comes to the Zoom. Number one, welcome the people on Zoom, on Facebook, on YouTube. So welcome them. You can say thank you everyone, that just like earlier, just welcome the people uh, from, um, from the Philippines on Zoom. Welcome, hey, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we welcome you on Zoom, and you see the name, you call them by name. Few of them, not all of them, but few of them. And then you say, okay, anyone on, 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 the, on, the, on Facebook, if you're on Facebook, just tap on the comment, I'm here, I'm here, something like that. You see, so it creates interaction. People don't go to see, it creates interaction. And same thing on YouTube. Whatever platform where, they, where you are live streaming, welcome the people who are going to And it also helps you to, to make sure that they can hear you, that everything, they, they can be a, 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 a conversation between you and that platform. Okay? So it's important to have them participate. So add, add them to the raffle and start the giveaway, share the screen. Now, when you do the giveaway, um, add a name to wheel of name, wheel of name, it will show you how to do it. But then as you do it, it's like a phenomenal software, just click the button, it shows randomly. You want to share the screen so that people see that that's exactly what is happening. That you're not just calling name, uh, out of your preference, but that the software is really choosing the name. One, every time we do an outreach, people want to make sure that it's fair. All right? They want to make sure it's fair, so you always want to make sure it's public. The same way you do a normal outreach and just see how you're picking up the ticket. Next slide. Okay. For the production team, the main goal of the production team is to make sure that all works smoothly. That's the goal. So this is the type of person you really want to have in the production team. Someone who is full of the Holy Ghost, full of wisdom, good people, who has a spirit of excellence. Because without the production team, everything can shut down. The person cannot be someone who does not take the work serious. It has to be someone who understands the urgency, who understands that this is a bad soul. This is not a game. Someone who is good think on his feet. Amen? Someone who can make adjustments very quick. Who can anticipate problems and solve them very quickly. Amen? It's that type of person that you need to be there at the production. Because that person, that person who is leading the production is like a captain of the ship. The people in front of the camera depend on his feedback. And the people from the social media depend on his feedback too. 
Amen. So he makes sure all things work smoothly. He can bring live testimony to the host. So for example, when at the social media, people are talking. Someone can pray for someone and they get healed. We have some situation where people got healed. People got breakthrough as we do the life. So the social media team will tell it to the production and the production will come and give us the paper. This thing just happened. So as we are speaking, we can say, oh my goodness, this thing just happened right now. And what it does is when people hear that, they say, oh, God, God is working in the life of people. The effects have to go up, their expectations have to go up. Amen? The social media team, their main function is to monitor Facebook, YouTube, or any other platform that you have. The second thing is to interact with the people and interact with the winners. Next slide. So, after the Zoom, when you have a winner, you need a sticky note. When you have the Zoom, you have the winner, you, you put the contact info, everything on the sticky note, and you put it on the gift. The moment you put it on the gift, you remove the gift out of the way. Amen? It's to avoid confusion. So you have a whole system. It's not hard. You just have to be sharp. You just have to be the whole time you focus. That's what we require. Focus. Okay? So how do we not text? On private message to the social media team, and the social media team add them to the delivery calendar. So, after we have a bunch of winners, we have a calendar for the delivery. So, for example, usually it's the following week. We tell them the following week, we're going to come and start the distribution of all the game. So, when can we stop to your home? So, what we notice in the Zoom is it makes it easier to enter people's homes. Before people we give the life to Jesus, we will ask them, can you come and pray in your home? Most people will say no. Some will say yes. But with the Zoom, we realize it's easy to enter people's homes. And of course, when we enter the home, we do extra work there. Amen? Any questions so far? Thank you, Andrea. Any questions so far? No? Okay, I'll continue. Next slide. So after we have the, the gifting and everything, you have the delivery team now going home to home, home to home, home to home. Amen? And they take the card, you put the two together, they break before they go there. You always want to go two by two, two by two. Never let a lady go by herself. Never enter someone home by yourself. Two by two. And there has to be a leader who knows where people are going. So that person is like a captain. It's like, okay, uh, Strawberry, you go here. These are the homes where you are going. Um, you, you are going here. You are going here. And everything has to report constantly. What is happening? And next, I'm about to enter this home. We are about to enter this home because most people be by themselves. We are about to enter this home. And we just prayed, we did this, we just finished. We are going to the next home. So that's what I was saying in the beginning. It's not that hard, but it requires logistics. It requires people who are focused. And then people who have a system excellence to do a, a Zoom outreach. So Spend no more than 20 minutes per houses. Now, obviously, obviously, if there's a case that requires more time, go for it. But really, don't you should not be spending more than 20 minutes. And you really, you really have to go there to you pay the fellowship. Really, you go there on the mission, deliver the, the product, bless the home, and not the home, pray for them. Uh, make sure that if the family is there to assemble the whole family, pray for the whole, the whole family, and then explain to them about baptism so that you can schedule a time for them to come for teaching at the church or whatever the process is at the church. But you want to talk to them about those things because when someone opens their home, 
there's a level of trust that has been established there. Okay? So you want to take advantage of that. Amen? So no more than 20 million. You realize that when people spend more than 20 million per house, they start to talk about nonsense. They don't focus anymore on this. And then you spend an hour there. By the time you're done, you miss the other appointment. No, you go there on purpose, on mission, like the Apostle Paul says, this one thing I do. Amen? This one thing I do. So you go there, you focus. Amen? So you pray for the families, you anoint the house, deliverance if necessary. We are cases where deliverance is necessary. Where we just anoint the house, you pray for the person, the person has money. So, hey, praise God. That's why I said that the poor deliver the poor, they're not just any type of people. These are maybe your ancestors, sir. These are the people who pray. These are the people who can deal with situations. Amen? Now, if you don't have enough of them, you can pay other people who don't necessarily know, but at least they need to be with someone who has a little bit more experience ministry with people. Amen? Very important. If you really, really, really don't have this type of people, then at least train the people before they go there, Tell them just to do a general prayer, pray for, pray for the house, give them the gift, invite them to church, and leave, go to the next location. Amen? But if the people are more experienced, you can, you can spend 20 minutes there. And, you know, we go to some home, we look at the home, we are not in the house, we go to the, the, to the bedroom, and there was a big idol right there. Big idol right there. They were doing witchcraft, not knowing. They were just following whatever they were doing. So we spoke to them about it. We spoke to them about the, the danger of that thing. Thank God they did it and they removed that from their home. And they never went back to that thing again. The lady told us that it's her mom who did those things. And she just followed the mom, really. I mean, this is a lady, she's like 40, 45. But, uh, but when we explain what those things are, they change. Amen. So many times we go to their home and we see some stuff. I don't like to go to their home because we can invite people to church, come here, you pray, and we even do deliverance, but then you don't know what is at home. So they go back and they go back again to the same vomit. Meanwhile, there's a there's an idol in the home. Meanwhile, there's a book about witchcraft in the home. All the, I mean, we've been to some home, all kind of crazy stuff that keep the people in bondage. So they come to church, that demon is like, okay, go ahead. I'm waiting you, I'm waiting for you at home. See you at 10 p.m. after church. <laughs> and then you wonder why well, they keep going up and down, up and down. Man, these people are rebellious. Now, meanwhile, there's something in their home. Amen. So I like to go to the home. <clears throat> and then baptism in water and in the Holy Ghost. If the Lord lead you to do so. Next slide. Next slide. That's it. Amen. So this is a, 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 a quick overview of a Zoom average. How to do an average Zoom. Amen. The good thing about it is you can do it from the coffee. You can do it from your office. You can be in your office. And someone else has all the giveaway at their home and you share the spirit. You can literally, if you start to master Zoom, you can literally be here and do a Zoom application in that world. In Cameroon, we trained a lady, she, it was not a Zoom because the, the internet is very slow, but we trained her through WhatsApp and she did an outreach in Cameroon. Never be, I mean, we do not go there, we just exactly what to do, send the money, and many people can give their love to Jesus. So we're living in an environment where even technology can be used to share the gospel. I have someone who told me, well, my brother, I know I'm called to this country, this country, but it's kind of tough. I said, brother, it's not that tough. Technology now allows you to die in that country without even being there. I was speaking to people in the Philippines right now. A Bible school in the Philippines. I've never been to the Philippines. And next week, we're going to assist them and do their own outreaches. We have a lady from Mexico 
never been to Mexico. A single mother of two. People told her that God can never use her because she was a single mother of two. She asked me, do you think God will use me? I said, absolutely. And I will prove that to you. Just follow what I tell you to do. She did. Guess what? 410 people gave the life to Jesus. When she did the outreach. 29 years old. Her name is Nancy. She did another outreach again. She packed the whole basketball court with seven hours. Amazing. Why not the Lord put in our heart to, to pay for our passport and everything? Because when we're going to start the tour of Central America, we will love for her to be there. Amen. Hallelujah. So I want to take some questions. We kind of started late, but I want to take some questions. If anyone has a uh, question, even on Zoom, uh, this is the time for questions. You can remove the sharing. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I have a question. On yes. The last slide. Yes. Uh, you asked for the baptism in water. Yes. Uh, let's say you get to someone's home, right? Mm-hmm. And the Holy Spirit leads you into that. Mm-hmm. But there's people in the home who don't understand what that is. So, mm-hmm. how can you go about explaining to them uh, what is baptism yeah. uh, in water and what is baptism in the Holy Spirit? Yes, oh, you, you just teach them. That's what I'm saying that when you go to the home, you have to kind of know what you're doing. It's, it's better, but unfortunately, it's not every town that you, every church has have. Many people don't know how to teach, right? Or they might even have, uh, let's say, uh, one or two, but you have many homes. So if the people who go to one home, they don't know what they're talking about, we always tell them, please don't open your mouth about it so that you don't, um, someone should not be eager to be teachers. Because they will, be, they will come to a greater condemnation. So, but what we tell them is tell them, tell them about it and invite them to the church. Does it make sense? Tell them about it and invite them to the church. Now, if you have someone who's very experienced and they can teach them, that's a different story. Because there are some people that we have met, they want to be baptized. Do you know how long the church, the own church, let them uh, wait five years? Five years to no baptism. So, and many times we go to a home like that, we realize we will answer to their prayer. They, they know everything that we need to know about baptism. So, the church has never let them get the baptism. So, it really depends on the kids. In a very, 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 very young, it's a different story. You need to know what to do with teaching. But you need to know what to do if you, if you, if you don't know, if you don't have a conviction you can teach, then don't do it. Just tell them about it. Share your testimony, for example. You say, you know what? I think you should come to church, bring them to the pastor. They will come. They will come because if they open their home, if they open their home and you sit down with them, there's a level of trust that has been established. Human being, it, it's, it's almost even in marketing, they tell you that. When you want to sell a big, a big package, sell a small package. Have them make small decisions because at every time they say yes, they're more likely to say yes. Does it make sense? But if you come right away, boom, they might say no. And the moment they say no, it's very hard to say yes after that. So you need to know what you're doing. When it comes to the baptism of the Holy Ghost, very simple. But you still need, you need to know what you're doing. And then we, there are many people that have been baptized in the Holy Ghost. When we, we, we preach, the scripture that I use a lot is Luke 3 16. And also, again, it depends. Wow, that's really slow. Do you have a, someone has an iPhone charger? Oh, thank you, thank you. And then you, you I love, I love, I love the iPhone, but the battery is not the best at all. Thank you so much. Oh. 
Hey guys. <clears throat> so we have been to some cases where you look at the person and the law said, pray for them, pray for this, pray for this, pray for this. There was a lady that we released that she was on the street and she was she was walking in, in basketball. We ministered to her, she received the Lord, and then the Lord said, pray for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So we explained to her what the baptism of the Holy Ghost is, and she said, do you want that gift? She said, yes. Just, it happened like a Cornelius, really, Cornelius moment. And then um, we prayed for her, and then her, boom, she received it. And then the next, I mean, she received it, and received the deliverance from it. What she was smoking because when she took back the cigarette to try to smoke, she went, Bleh! I'm a desire left. So that was that case. So it really depends on the case. You need to be really need to know what you're doing. So what, what I can recommend is that's what you need that captain to when they send people to home. He needs to know what is happening in the home. Amen. And that's usually someone who knows how to minister. It's important you can go home. And literally, you enter the home as domestic violence. You need to know what you do. When it's something like that, obviously, we can do our intensive more training on that. When you come to a home as domestic violence, you call 911. Amen? You try to calm the people when you call 911. Because if something happens, you don't call 911, they can they, they come at you. We've been to a home where someone will knock on the door, the person who had a gun in his mouth, the body to himself. We knock on the door. It will not, it will not open the door. The person said, keep knocking. And kept knocking. That's when the guy came, gave his life to Jesus and cried and said, I was about to shoot myself. So, a case like that, what you do is you, you encounter the person, they keep talking to them about the love of God. But immediately, immediately, you bring them in contact with the pastor. Amen? Immediately with the pastor. Immediately. Say, no, you call us on everything. I think you need to talk to my pastor. Or you need to talk to my dear. You see, as a certain thing, you the pastor will check quickly. So it really depends on where you go. It's not always black and white. It really depends on the home. If you just go home, you put together, you know, I won't be baptized. And I've been in church for a long time, I've been in church for a long time. Why are you baptized? Sometimes just people you notice know, it. Uh, like New York City, sometimes it's hard to find you know, a river or whatever, you know, and people are just eat. So that's what it depends on this. Do you have any questions from Zoom? Yes. What can you do? Okay, <clears throat> the question is, what can you do if you want to do a Zoom outreach but you cannot visit the house? Well, one of the things that you can do is, if they win, when they win, okay, you can change the nature of the gift. So it can be something like uh, maybe Amazon gift card. You don't need to visit the home to give that to them, right? But <clears throat> you can still tell them, for you to receive it, I need to do a Facebook video with you. So that's that's one way. I will put your message because the goal is you want to talk more. Because even though many people have said amen, amen, I receive the Lord, you're not sure. You're still not sure. So there's a follow-up work that needs to be done after. Amen. So for me, that's what I will do. I will do at least that's one way. The other way is it really depends if. You, you do it for church or not. If it's for church, I can just say, hey, we have your gift. We can even send them a test. We have your gift. Can you come and pick it up at church? If they're, 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 they're local, can you come and pick it up at church at this time? And when you come and pick it up, um, the, the pastor will want to share a few words with you. Does it make sense? So just use your creativity. When you look at it, there's, there's many ways to do it. Well, these are two ways that I will do it. Any other questions? Yes. <clears throat> so the question is, do you, are you welcome, you said, do you always pray before you go to the person home? Yes. Now, 
What is the nature of my prayer? I don't pray prayer of doubt. I don't pray prayer of, oh, my God is so scared. No. I'm praying the will of God. Lord, what do you have for that person? Amen? Because many times people pray too much prayer of fear. God is with you. God will protect you. Amen? It's the same God who told you to do this happen. Obviously, if it's a law, you can do it. It's a big difference. If you yourself just did it, well, that's a different story. But if it's the law who told you to do it, then it will protect you. Amen? It will protect you. But me, I, I like to pray the will of God. I say, Lord, I'm going to this home. What do you expect there? What do you want me to talk about? Because for me, it's like a counseling session. It's only 20 minutes. But I have 20 minutes to allow the Holy Ghost to walk in that family. Amen? And when people open their home to you, for example, in Brooklyn, I went to this family. We spent more than 20 minutes because we were surprised, but no more people there. It was a two bedroom apartment, but it was about 10 people. <laughs> it was a, the mom, the grandma, all the children. So she told all the grandchildren. They were all there. I mean, it was wonderful. We prayed. The mom, uh, the mom did not come to the outreach because she was busy at work. And we prayed for her. And we did marital counseling. And then the grandma asked us, Sir, can you please come again to our home? And do Bible study. You see, so you never know what type of house you're going to be in. And I look at it just because I have to leave, but I'm like, wow, it's a great opportunity. I mean, you talk about 10, 10, 10 to about 15 people in that place. And then they have other people, same family, uh, same family but they were neighbors. So you talk about, and the grandma say, can you do about this? They don't know the grandma used to draw, God said, right to the same. God changed her life, and she always wanted the children and the grandchildren to follow the law. But she just did not know how to minister to the people. So that out for her was such a blessing. So she asked me, can you come and from time to time regularly give, do a Bible study for, for my whole family? I said, absolutely, yes. I assign someone to do it, but they never follow through. So many times that's the problem. Is Christian not following through? Amen. Many times that's the problem. We have a many times people ask, but what about follow up? Or what about this? I say, you know, I love souls. There's no way we can love souls the way we love souls and not think about discipleship and follow up. No way. You will never see. But true soul winner, not likely to suffer because they have a heart for the people. But when you come to work with other Christians, and then when you ask them, did you follow up? Did you do it? They will tell you, no, we will do the follow up. Brother, brother, you always do the work. We will do the rest. And then when you come back, did you do it? No. But that was close to 15 people. You imagine that? That's, a, that's more than a cell group right there. 15 people. It was a simple assignment because the person that I was uh, with, they live in that apartment complex. I said, Sister, you need to be here. They never did. When I'm going back to Brooklyn, they know me. I'm going to go and visit that family again. I'm going to be in Brooklyn for a while. I'm going to go and visit that family again and take care of business myself. But it's, it's very sad because as a, as a leader, sometimes we want to delegate. And we don't want to mark manage when then and then people they don't follow through. And then if you you don't give them assignment, <laughs> they must be saying they have a problem with them. And they don't follow through. And I don't want people to have problems with God. How do we go? Amen. Yes, sir. It's so I have questions. Yes, sir. Uh, the first one I have today mm -hmm. is all the scripture of the Bible says.
Okay. Uh, let me let me ask a question because I since Zoom, I'm gonna give them. So here's the question. It says uh, Jesus said yes, Jesus said Jesus said is not for for the world, but you do you came for the food. So his question is, uh, how do I make sure that the people don't just come for the gift, but uh, that they come for the world, right? Do what Jesus did. Yes, he told them that, but still, he was still taking care of the need. When I invite people to come to an outreach, I want them to do the work. My job is to preach the gospel first. Let that seed enter there. It's not my job to make sure if they're born. It's the job of the Holy Ghost. It's not mine. If you go out with some people that act thought they were born again, pastors, pastors. The church in Washington, D.C., I mean, I mean I'm laughing, but it's sad. It's really sad. Called Soul Winning Session. And go to that church. And the leader, Apostle, Doctor, so and so. And say, Sir, we hear for evangelism, the train church, and everything. He goes, What is evangelism? We look at each other like, is, is that a trick question or is he really serious? He didn't know what evangelism is. He said, That's a soul winning. So, what is that? You can come and look, Apostle. So station. But then I see some people that when you take a look at them, you will think they're not born again. Tattoo everywhere. But yet when they talk to you about the Lord Jesus Christ and how much he saved them, I realize one thing, it's not my job to know what is in their heart. My job is to preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. And if I can preach a lot, a lot, a lot of things, God. Please God, if because the word of God is like a hammer, the Bible says if they believe in their heart and they come from what they shall be saved, they say, How would they believe unless they do what? They have to hear first. You know, when we did the outreach in Queens, we, we work with um, uh, it's Queens Bridge, it's the biggest public housing in North America, Canada, and America. It's huge. I mean, big. And we did an outreach that a uh, church invited us to, to come and help them. So we went there and I went with the team. But then they started to say, well, we just want to have a prayer booth here. And we're going to give the gift. I said, absolutely not. I said, no, you have to send this to your. Uh, uh, they gave us the permit, they don't want to lose the permit, and people are talking to me about permit. I said, you know what? I heard you, but none of you are telling me what the Holy Ghost said. How will you tell me what the Holy Ghost said? He said to preach. We need to preach. No, we're going to have a prayer book. The people that will come to the prayer book are not unbelievers. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Period. Not our opinion. And they have to hear the gospel so that faith and salvation enter their heart. So I have to literally talk to them like, if you, if, if you don't want us to preach the gospel, I'm a generous man, I like to give. So I'm not just here to give, I'm ready to so I'm giving for purpose. I am giving so they can hear. For me, it's an excuse for them to sit down and hear the gospel. Amen? So we have to tell them, if you don't want to preach the gospel, I'm they said, no, I want to stay. And they don't know how that's going to work. My goodness, you know. And I preached the case stuff. The Lord told me that in that community, abortion is number one problem. You, you go to New York City, you preach against abortion. New York City is right with abortion to the point where they even do the same abortion. So the Lord said, we deal with that. But not in condemn, condemning the people. I preach out of John 10. Tell them who has deceived you. Mom, abortion. Uh, a big problem there in that community is um, gang, uh, drug gang. Push them with 
the guest is in a long term to make a declaration. They took all of them. Now, see, if you are in the game here, thus says the law, if you destroy one of the children again, the law will take with you personally. I mean, I was full of the Holy Ghost. I mean, you don't know what days I get, and you tell them that. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's not my job to make sure. Because even though Jesus knew they come for the, the food, he still let them come. When he fed the 5,000, and he finished preaching, the disciples wanted to chase them away. That's what they said. Let them go. But Jesus said, no. Take them. Take them. So in another slide, when I talk about the general Irish, I tell you that. And I say, we sometimes have believer before we want to tell Jesus is full of compassion. He's full of compassion. If you go to a homeless and you have food to give him and he's hungry, people will give him the food. If you have to bread, people will give him the bread. You can't just go there and just eat and let him run with him. Meanwhile, you have the social media. Get back to him. Let him eat. It's not a problem. Jesus is good. When the guy with leprosy came, he healed him. He healed the guy. So Jesus come and show his goodness to the people. There are many times when we say to the people, the reason why we do this is because God loves you. He has compassion on you. And he wants you. He knows, he knows you're hungry. And when we talk to the people, they say, Jesus loves you. And we love you. They say, we can see. That's what he tells us. Always. We can see. Not just I was here. When I was naked, he gave me clothes. When I was hungry, he gave me food. Amen. When I was in prison, he gave me prison. When did you do that? No. When you did, he did this. So it's time to demonstrate the love of God to the people. So we do that a lot. And also, you have to know which country you are and what area you are. <clears throat> You can take a flyer all you want and put come for great announcing the word of God. They're not coming, they don't even know what they're talking about. America for now officially America is a different church. They said we have to evangelize America right now with the pace of growth of the population and the dynamic of the population. There is a deficit of 10. Ten thousand churches deficit. I went to New York and saw it in my own eyes. Ten million people in New York only six thousand churches. This is including the Catholic and all the other Catholics. In the Lord of the Sun, there's not enough churches in Washington. So we have a bishop also. Pastor, when I tell you, don't let so it. Has anyone ever told you that Jesus loves you? What you already ask me is, who is Jesus? So I love this. This is very good. I thought he was, he was playing, but no, he did not know at all who is Jesus. I mean, I'm telling you, and there was a church right there. I'm going to church right there. I'm going to church right there. They did not even have the distance. To just come and tell them that, that Jesus loves you. That's it. I'm not even talking about you making this up, but just tell you that Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. So that's where we are. It's simple preaching of the gospel. Preaching the gospel everywhere. Let me take one question from Zoom and then I'll come to you. We have a question on Zoom. Okay. So the question is, how often do we check up on the people after the outreach? It really depends on the person. It really depends. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, the scripture that Jesus said is very true. The harvest is right on the level of their feet. They, they really need feet. So sometimes even for us, it's very hard. That's why we, we keep asking people, come on mission, come on mission. I mean, just Right now, I'm always telling people that I know it's not God. 
A lot of work, but Lebanon don't want to come into the state. Not at all. Not at all. So, but in the in the good case, in the good case, let's say it's good and it's all fine. Now we check up on them as long as they let us check up on them. For us, when we start a relationship with people, it's a relationship. We don't just go, uh, yeah, let me check and check and check. Okay, I did my duty, but I no. That's not how we disciple people. It's a relationship. I'm really coming to the person and saying, the Lord sent me to help you. Some of the people in our team that you saw in the video, that's how it started. We met them online. And many people see our team as, oh my goodness, it's such a hard work here. But they don't know. They don't know the work that went that be behind it. They don't know the word. Actually, Jordan, come very quickly. Come and share a little bit. Jordan is one of the leaders, and he did a, a group of young people because they have different leaders and they did groups. But he will tell you a few things that we do and a few cases that we meet. People think, no, we, we, we build a relationship as long as they let us do it. Does it make sense? Some, they don't. They just want to get the word very quickly and they want to be no problem to sit for them. When it goes to take you, we never leave them, we never forsake them. Direct the path to someone else. But the whole mistake is a relationship is every time I see someone, every time some God send me someone, and I tell them God send me to help you. For example, you remember the young kid that I gave five hundred dollars? He had been faithful. I have the video. His mom, he sent me the video of the kid. I will give him one hundred dollars, and he has to give ten dollars, ten percent to the church, ninety to the mom. As you show me the other key gun and give it to the police, he said, Oh, it's so exciting. And then I will send another 100 and another one. How many? The mom sent me a beautiful letter to you. She said, Thank you so much for believing in us. So for me, it's a relationship. You think I'm just going to, I finished the, the 500 yesterday. You think I'm just going to leave the kid like that? No. I'm like an uncle to him now. You see? Is that everyone? No. Not at all. Those that call me, oh yeah, they can call me anytime. It's a relationship right there. Amen. So that's that's how we do. I don't look at how many times for me it's relationship. I'm your brother. My job is to make sure you are. I pray for you. I help you until you are conformed into the image of Christ. That's what the Bible says. As long as we let me do it. If you don't want to let me do it, or you don't want to obey the Lord, then I, I, there's nothing I can do after that. I need to focus on other people. I still love you. But hey, you don't cast your pearls to swine. Period. Amen? There may be a case or where you, you're in the group, how you deal with the group. Yeah. Uh, so let me share about Brendan a little bit. Go ahead. Like Brendan, um, he was one thing that uh, I Yeah. Outside, and I just said to the young man, Hey, prophet, if you feel led, if you feel led, bring some chips. Now, I'm thinking I'm just bringing some chips. No, 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 you're about to save someone like He goes to the store, sees some men named Brendan. The Lord tells him to speak to him. He speaks to him, Brendan does not listen to him, and then he feels the function of the Holy Ghost. He goes and speak to him again. He speak to him again. I want him to invite him. He called me and said, Mr. Paul, I found a guy in the parking lot. I invited him to travel with us. I was like, I was about to be juicy. But what in the world are you doing? You don't even know the guy, but he goes, Mr. Paul, I know, I know, but the Holy Ghost called me. 
see the Holy Ghost. Hey, let me say Holy Ghost. I just speak quiet. John now, Brendan is the son of a pastor. And he has been running away from church, doing drugs. And his father is not going. I saw you dying. He was sure the son would be dying. The moment of the post meeting, they are at the church. Praying to God, save his life, save his life, save his life. So after the prophet, hey, God tell me, keep not knowing that the process has been initiated in heaven because people are praying at the church. And what goes boom, 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 they meet. That's one of the most people that we know. Yes. Sure, sure. Yes. Yeah, when you were talking about the prophet, I remember when I first was them to my house. They told me they were going to ride and come into my house. And then the house was not ready. Mm-hmm. But as soon as you said, I think that I said it properly, I had to make it ready. Mm-hmm. I was in the store with my mom, picking up some stuff for that, mm-hmm. right? And when I was in the store, it's like I was talking to myself. But the voice was coming from my stomach. You are not charging my service. Yeah. And I said, man, no, my mom will not let that happen. I will not tell my mom that no way. So this conversation, like I was talking to my servant, the voice was coming from his face. Mm-hmm. You are not charging my servant. Little did I know that they were praying that God should give them favor because they were no finances. <laughs> so when they came home and I was fighting with the Holy Spirit, like, oh no, I'm not saying that to my mom. I mean, I didn't prepare one thousand or something.
That's why I'm going to Because the reality is, someone will come. I can talk to the person in the night. And you run and come and just say, Jesus, they say, hey, then what do you think you're supposed to be sacrificed? Someone can come and see a person and just do whatever a person has to do. And you tell them the same thing you will not see. But he said, things because he's supposed to be an apostle Paul to him. He's at the team of him. So when you even do the average, thank God you make a lot of pastors. So when I come to an area like this, sometimes you meet some people and you know where to direct them. These people are saying, okay, someone is going to have a lesson. And maybe it is something like that. When someone comes and you tell the God, they say, look, I'm not going to go pastor. And they're still at the church today. Is it everyone like that? No. But at least it's something you can preach the gospel. The Lord told us something. Preach the gospel, anyone, but you cannot disciple anyone. You can preach the gospel to everyone. But it's something everyone can do. There's some people that I can't. They will not be able to listen. Number one, if they speak Ukrainian, I don't speak Ukrainian. Because it's simple like that. There are people that will listen to this, but they will not listen to me like that. You see what I'm saying? They might listen because they respect, but I'm talking about receiving. They won't. So we have to be humble and realize, okay. And the Bible talk about it. One soul, another water. But God gets the increase. Sometimes you do the same work together, but sometimes someone else is supposed to water. And it's good. It's fine. Help them find that person. Help them find the person. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So that means that uh, it's a continuous process to that correct to be saved. That's what you're saying. It's not instant. It's a future tense. Well, the first question is: Is that really true? Yes. Because um, no, because of the shall is actually what they call a guarantee. It's a it's a, a King James way of saying it will happen. Now, now, first. The, when, the, when the King James talk about shark, the word shark goes to study on what it means. Go study on what it means. I let you go study that word yourself. Okay. The word shark, start shark, what it means. Yeah. Do, do a good study on that. You will see what it means, that word means. The shark. Amen. When it comes to the so the question for God is asking at what point? Yes, my question. Yes, my answer. It's not my business. No. If you want to go that wrong, people, yes, yes, yes. 
Everyone is responsible for such. If you lie, that's your problem. That's your problem. Something I want to collect here. We're doing the Irish work, and it is going well. And they are I just came right there. I said, Where are the people? There's some people can go. I said, Where is it? I don't know what you need the people. Take the gift out of that. And I just made a comparison. I said, Listen to me, everyone. We spoke to you about the law. God was not the age of the Anyone who stole this you better think about it right now. God was not the case. <laughs> Every single person has their responsibility. Now we said to this the, 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 the law of the it says, I said before you, life and death. Choose life. Now, if you choose to go and lie, it's your problem. And I feel like the people. I'm not going to spend my time going to tell you what you say or not say. I tell you what the Bible says. It's your responsibility. The same way when uh, someone came and took the of me, I took my own responsibility. He said, Lord, I thank you. Help me. Give you. Everyone has responsibility. I have a guy who came to me and said, Well, you are know, all. If people spend time in the presence of God, uh, it will be different. If you receive the law, I say, really? I say, yes. There's no way to fill up the fill up the city some stuff. There's no way you can spend time with the of God and you don't change. I say, really? It's good to be other than me. Praise of God. Thank okay. you. Walk to the God. They get. They commit the sin in their heart. Everyone has a feeling. One day the Holy the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Son, never, never play games with the free will. To never play games with the first few He said, even I the Lord gave them the free will to sin. You choose to sin and you choose to make choice. No one has the power to control that one. No one. My job is to tell you, brother, sister, this is life. Choose life. Allow the Holy Spirit to change you. Believe in your heart. You don't have to understand everything. But just say, Lord, I believe, help me. Be like me. Choose. If you choose. Now, I'm not going to promise you that God will tell the truth. Not with that. If you follow the law, if you reward you a hundred fold here, in the age to come, less persecution. We tell them less persecution. People who come to us, we realize that the people who come to us and travel with us, who are still standing strong, are the ones who understood persecution is part of the package. The rest, you make your choice. You make your choice. I try that thing where I try to change people, but they are, let me say, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. But it will not change. And one day I was sitting, I was uh, laying down on my bed. I felt the presence of God here. It felt like it was Jesus Himself. I did not see, but I felt the strong and I heard Him speak. He said, Son, believe it or not, some people have made up their mind that they will never serve Him. Look my heart. Some people have made up their mind. It's easy to talk about the sinners. Let's talk about the church. They have made up their mind. They will never serve the Lord. Apostle is speaking. Yeah, 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 yeah. They have made up their mind. Their heart, they will never. If you go there, you cannot convince someone like that. If the Holy Ghost will never convince them, why are you going to do it? I know some people, we show them. I was speaking to a guy. I mean, he was speaking to me. He's telling me it's free will in the Bible. I said, yeah, it's in the Bible. Say where? I said from Genesis to Revelation. I show him scripture after scripture and he refused. He made up his mind that because his argument was this, free will is not in the Bible, therefore 
He is sinning because it's the will of God. Yes. But he's wanting to talk to me. So I'll show you in the Bible. Then when it was time to speak, I said, brother, before you speak, open your Bible. You better show me foundation in the scripture. He goes, no, I don't have to show you. I don't, I don't, I don't use the Bible. I said, in that case, this, this discussion is over. So what do you mean this discussion is over? What do you mean this discussion is over? I listen to you. You need to listen to me. I said, I don't have to listen to nothing. I owe you nothing. The Bible says, owe nothing to anyone except to love me. I love you. I don't hate you. But I don't have to listen to your garbage. If your foundation is not giving up, we have no discussion possible here. Because I know in his heart, he made up his mind. You see what I'm saying? Now, I'm not the police. I'm not the convict of sin. My job is to talk to When they come, we talk more. If uh, there's a lady that I, I, I used to mentor, but she left, she, she lived with a guy. They're not married. They have sex all the time. And this, they have a baby. Now they both walk together. And then she complained that she cannot get a girl. After all, you live in sin. She said, if you love the guy so much, you love him, why don't you solve that problem quickly? The Bible says that if you cannot contain your heat, marry. Go find a girl and get married. No. I can't marry this guy. I don't trust him. Then leave. No. Then I put the best in the world. So what you call the God to speak to me? Maybe I'll begin this day. And the God is very rich guy. That's what he said. How do you talk to me? I will hear you do that. She refused. I said, sister, excuse me. You, you pretend to love this guy. And you rather me go to hell so that you can continue to follow him. Because you know, because she knew, if he did love Jesus in the church, if he said, you know what, we need to stop what we do. She refused. She refused to give me his number, his email, so I can push the gospel to him. What's the second To do what? No, no. Uh, let me go. No one, no one. No. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yes, it is. You're not gonna know the whole package like that. You need to go. Right. I mean, like, I'm gonna explain that this is the foundation of the foundation. It's not complicated. Salvation is not complicated. The thing of the cross. No, remember me. He did his name. It's not complicated. I don't know what to make it complicated. It's not complicated. It was not complicated for me. No, one person came to me and said, I cannot believe this. It's hard to believe. I said, that's the problem. I did. I said, brother, when we go to judgment, God will bring you, me, you. I said, I don't want to believe. I took it. I said, oh my God, thank you. When, when they see the gospel is good news, I will be sitting like that. Mm-hmm. My family had a, a lot of witchcraft, incest, a lot of stuff. So I knew we were lost. So when someone came and told me, God has forgiven for you, I said, What? I think you can thank you. I don't have no time to give this spirit. What do I do? What do I do? So for me, when you see me, when I pray, yesterday we were preaching to a Korean church, and I was just thanking the Lord. I sat to cry. Because every time I think the Lord, I remember how he was with me. I'm just grateful. I don't have time to pray. Mm. I'm just grateful. The Bible says, Jesus said, take it by the child. The child is a little part of it. I just believe. I'm, I'm not trying to put my head no. And I do what he asked me to do. Because she lost it. And I just spoke so that. Because I used to be the one who paid in the lecture. I was top student in business. She was in my professor student. So intellectualism was a big problem until I realized it was pride. 
Pastor, no, la no va a tener que ir a And God started to teach me things. I mean, it was a journey for me. I'm not going to say it was just, it was a journey. I went through a journey. I, had, I was sitting exactly like a sitting. But the same way you were asking this kind of question, I was asking them. And then the Lord, and then I came to a point where I said, Lord, be sure. Because ultimately, ultimately, we need to get the relationship with the Lord. It's a good relationship. Amen. I can spend three hours at hospital and stay here and ask, but explain to me how it is. Explain to me how it is. No. For me to know there's a dimension where I need to stay in bed. You understand the way is why I understand it. None of us can understand that. So what emptiness? Many of the stuff that we ask, they are solved in emptiness with the Lord. Reading the word, prayer, asking him. The Holy Spirit is what? Mission process. There is a dimension of God where if you don't spend intimacy with him, you will never know. You can ask questions all the morning, you will never know. Because what? Many of these things are revealed. They are revealed. Amen? Instead of uh, the, 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 the color for the color man, it's still not foolish. It's intimacy. Spend time with the Lord. Because even just that testimony will know. No one can have their testimony. See what I'm saying? I saw some awesome people, if you don't worry, give me a testimony. Tell me what God has done for you. And spend time in the world. He spent time on love and the world of God. Amen. Yes, sir. And then I will take from one more also. So, what role Okay, go ahead. So, what role? Because uh, I know we got a lot of time. And, uh, but, what my sister was saying about when someone has blessed from the one who is like a pastor, they feel mm-hmm. the pastor does not do what he can for the same. Mm-hmm. Neither than we all oh, correction, it. correction. So no, let all, me let me put a correction on that one. He said the pastor does not do what the evangelist do. The Bible actually says do the work of the evangelist. Yeah, but, but no, no, I was I just want to make sure because. The reason why I'm stopping like that is because we have the error here. I so I have to make sure that uh, what I'm saying is the function of the pastor mm-hmm. is not exactly I don't know what exactly right. Jesus, the great commission goes all over us to evangelize. Right. So but for example, the evangelist might go like you're saying 20 minutes. But the pastor, if you look at the definition of pastor when it comes to the glory. No, I know, I know what it is. Right? I know what it is. So that person might spend more time with one person per se. So um what what how does that correlation work? Because it's very simple. Let me I I think I understand. It's very simple. Follow the Holy Spirit. You know, this is what I say. I literally say more than we spend 20 minutes. Because there are other houses. So should we spend a lot of time here and let the other people die? No, follow the Holy Spirit. Now there are situations where it requires you to spend more time. Don't just go there and spend more time because you want to do it. You need to do what the Holy Spirit tells you to do. That's why I was saying that us as Christians, we really need to die in ourselves. We really need to be time and let the Holy Spirit do what it does and follow him. That's what we fail. That's truly what we fail. Because we, we go there, we, we miss it out of our feet. We know it. We use it. We miss out of the cross. All the way to the top. There are many times where I walk, stay on the way to the top. What do say? We cannot see. That's all we have to say about the cross. We don't want to say, right now, I need you to function this way. That's what we have to come and say to the way to the But you know I'm a pastor. Oh, really? Like he doesn't know. He, he, he's the one who gave the gift, right? I think you understand the question. Mm-hmm. The question is how is it that the time goes and all day where it comes? I just answer you. I don't say I say no, the Holy Ghost. I understand. But yeah. I'm talking about, for example, you highlighted a little bit of that, that if the evangelist goes out there, brother, 
Follow the Holy Ghost. Follow the Holy Spirit. Amen. Follow the no, 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 listen. Don't trust me. I've been following the Holy Spirit. You know, I meant to uh, visit the four hundred and fifty churches. The work of them. It's not. It's not. We follow the Holy Spirit. It is not the Holy Spirit. Don't you know about the Holy Ghost? I am the Lord. Don't you know about the Holy Spirit? What did I say? Never send anyone to go to that other world to offer the Holy Ghost. Go on the book of Acts. We do not have to go to the book of Paul. Go to the book of Paul. Paul is dead. That's why. That's why people they learn. They go there, they go minister out of their whatever imagination. Then they face problems, now they suffer. The, the Bible even said, the Holy Spirit will tell you what to say. The Holy Spirit will tell you. I've been mean, there, what you ask him. And every time we tell you, there's a pastor again, yeah. and this is what he asks. Uh, that was the uh, last week. How do you want to do that? I'm going to say this. And they ask us to go to the Moral. The Moral girl is formed. And he wrote, <clears throat> Jehovah Jireh. He gave that to him. He did not believe it. Hold on a second. He could not believe it. It took him a while to believe it. He said, blah, 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 blah. Jehovah Jireh. He said, no, I'm not saying that. Jehovah And it's still. And people wonder what the ministry don't do well. Because they put their too much trust. Trust the Holy Spirit. Trust. I noticed that it's always hard to talk to people who don't trust the Holy Ghost like that. Like I'm talking about trust. You know? That's what I'm saying. At this year, all sex, you don't have to trust the Holy Ghost. You don't have to believe the Spirit. If they don't have knowledge, they don't have Bible. Amen. First of all, if I come, it obviously depends on the level. If you are in the church, if you are in the church, um, let me just be real here. If you are in the church and the pastor has been preaching every Sunday, and you come to me and you still tell me you don't have knowledge, something's wrong with you. Something's wrong with you. Because what this is how when I want to all of us, they preach. I'm asking the Holy Spirit the knowledge before they pass the Holy Ghost. Tell me the pastor. That's how I left my life. Because when I was born, I said, Lord, I need love for this. Yeah. Just to see. Tell me the pastor. He didn't know this. 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 He didn't know Pastor, you're not in the church. You will experience me. I can't live. I cannot live. And, and have a emotion like that. But unless the Holy Ghost wants something. When you really want to search, but it's another thing. Sometimes people like to explain, explain, and you don't realize that the Holy Spirit is like, no, go search. There's a there's a down when the Holy Ghost. We say, go ask the uh, prophet, go ask the uh, apostle. But every time you tell the age, hey, be accountable for your own salvation too. So we'll take up that Bible and read and meditate it on. You see what I'm saying? But unfortunately, in the body of Christ right now, people are also not right there. So, why? So, do you work? That's the new thing. What do you need? They are all of Because you can't have a suspicion. You have to be able to see the And you hope that the only thing is that when something is in it, they can go to the hospital and consume this.
There's, there's never a best way to prepare. <clears throat> if there was a best way to prepare, trust me, many people would be best prepared. There's never a best way to prepare. But I would say this, when it comes to everything with God, everything with God, you have to learn to trust Him. Learn to trust your Lord. It's one of the main, 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 main problems in church. Trust. Everything. And yet God said, trust me. Just trust me. Many times when you see people who always, before they have to go to there's a problem with trust. God does not just give you everything. I know that for a fact. I'm saying it. Not always. You have to learn to say, you know what, God is not a liar. If he said, for example, the hour that you're doing, God has silent. <clears throat> the church that was supposed to give us the food, there was an issue, and the food is not going to come, right? But I know the Lord told us, do the outreach. And He told us, put in the flyer, finish. So I can panic. I can panic. Oh, I can do what I say. I said, Lord, here we are. What do we do? The Lord said, let's make a phone call. He makes a phone call. There's a phone call, and then you will always help us. Flying, doing this, going here, teaching to people all over Germany, and I have to prepare for tonight, and then I have to pray for all of you. And then I have no one to go away. She called me. She said, Can you please make a phone call and find the food? A tenant. What we have that one hour we will be done for my own compassion and next door vision. They often think that someone the team was just flying, flying. They were tired, they were not to be. They said, No, we need to teach all the time. Come on, let's let's not be a step. They go there and get to last how that they come back to the end of the house. I can explain that to people. Again, okay. you're going to have to trust the Lord and believe. Just like everyone did. You're going to have to be like Peter. There's a dimension of God you will never see by sitting here. You're going to have to be there. And it's going to be because, first of all, your life is different than mine. My calling is different. You have your own calling. So you're going to have to. Discover the Lord yourself. Amen. Because even if I explain, you, you probably will not understand. Because for me, it was not just explained, it was revealed. Someone spoke, I did not understand right away. I just said, okay. But then it's only on the field that it was revealed. And that's just the way it worked the Lord. Do you have another question on uh so so Dre? That's that's what it is, uh Dre, uh Andrea. <clears throat> When it comes to mission, learn to trust God. Just learn to obey his voice. Learn to obey his voice. There's a mission team. That was my previous, uh, how do you call it? Uh, uh, team. Team of the Bible school. He brought the team to India. And they were going to India. They had prepared everything, right? They're going to see, see what was not prepared. It was a prayer school. India. Chasing after them, they didn't know what to do. There's no law. They were just after them. Every time they were just obeying the law. When they finished it, the Lord would say, Just sit here, continue. They continue, not knowing that God was saving them from a terrorist Hindu group that was bent to kill them. One day, they went to sleep in the forest of the tent at 3 a.m. in the morning. The Lord woke them up and said, Pick up this, 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 this. Wake up everyone and leave. Leave the tent. Now, if you are intellectual, you will not leave the tent. What do you mean leave the tent? We pay for it. But they did not know God was saving their life. To, and the Lord told them to drive in the night with no light. How can you drive 
It's not like you have life anywhere here. You know life in the growth, not knowing what. It's still, the, the things don't even ask him because they know him. They know that the guy will follow the Holy Ghost all the time. They were like, we don't want to ask him, just want to do what he says. We have special level. Two hours later, this Hindu group came to them. Now, God, in them, because they saw the tent and they did not see the car, the light going, so they thought they were still sleeping there. So they took their time to wash him off. Meanwhile, while they thought they were still here, they were on the way and they still did not know that the police was after them. How did they know? Because it was violent. The police knew it. So the next time they would suppress the hell, but I said, but I'm calling to something to go back to America because we don't want to deal with that situation. How can you prevent that situation? Can you? So, but can you? You can't prepare for something like that. But what saved them? Total obedience to the Holy Ghost. Because even if the Holy Ghost told them, hey, there's a group that's going to try to kill you, but I will save you, they would probably say, I'm not going. But yet, yeah. hey, we talk about some of this, my friend, they go, I'm not going to tell you. What do you want me to tell this? They can take you and put you in a fire. How are you going to prepare for something like that? If I tell you that they can take you and put you in the fire, you're not going to burn, you're not going to kill you, you're going to believe me, you're not going to believe me. So you have to obey the Lord. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, when you die and you meet Jesus face to face, he will give you an account. Period. That's the end of the day. That was my conclusion. King Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived. For those who like to ask questions, he was the wisest. So go with Ecclesiastes, what he said to me. I will make that change my life. So at the end of the day, that is the sons. At the end of the day, the sum of our life is to obey the Lord. That's it. And I'm telling you, he is right. At the end of the day, you have to ask the Lord, why did you call me? The moment he tells you, you just do that. You obey the Lord. It's a, for me, it's the safest place to be. Obedience to the Lord at the end of the day. Many times I go online, I see people like you are apologetic and this. I say, okay, you do all these things. But at the end of the day, when Jesus looked at you face to face, he asked you one question. He said, I will take our work and put them under the fire. What is going to come out of it? Is that wood, hair, and stuff? Or will it be precious gold? That's, that's the end of the thing. So I don't waste my time. What the Bible says, use as discussion anymore. I don't, I really don't. Please find out what God has called you to do and do it. Amen? Like Apostle Paul says, this one thing I do, I know my ways, forgetting the thing from behind. Going to my course. I want my testimony. I want my testimony to be I have finished my race. I want my testimony, testimony to be like King David. When he said that King David did everything that God asked him to do. That's it. And since I've been living like that, I noticed that I'm very fruitful. Very fruitful. When people come and say, Oh, are you sure that you good? I say, look, look what the Lord is doing. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's so many testimonies to come. There's so many. But I promise you, I will used to be someone who asked questions in this season. I just I said, you know what? I'm not worse than Solomon. And then he came to the end of it. He said, he, he actually fell. Yeah. So for me, is what did God want you to do? Don't tell me you don't know. And that God can tell you if you ask him. Truly, if you want to know, you are really done. It tells you focus on that. Run with it. Because that's the only thing going to hold you accountable. Amen. So, when you do this outreach, it's to stir up the heart of people to see what God is doing. To be like, hey, maybe it's best if you go ask the Lord, Lord, what are you calling me to do? Forget about everything like this. 
forget about everything and just go past the Lord. What do you find? It's a question that many people don't ask. You ask him, tells you, you do it. Because the moment you know what God has called you to do, I dare say this. The moment you know what God has called you to do, and Pastor can help you, God has called you. The moment you know, there are days. Now you truly see the way that God has sent you. Apostle. The moment you really go out of the kingdom, then you truly see the way. The moment you knew what God has called you to do, I started driving people to the whole of the world. Because I knew God sent them to you. The pastor is here. Until you know, or until you see after it, you don't know what you're talking about. I promise you. The only way is when you know. When you know, then you will then they do it back into it. Why God wants you to get into the church. Then you can choose the man that God is going to do. And you can go all the way to do it. It's to encourage you. Don't ask the Lord. The Bible says, consider my way. So you see, at least consider what I say. Amen. When you know, I promise you, my sister Sunday is same with me. I never said that this is the last time I was going to be there in the moment. There in the cross. When God is even speaking, you ask how to end. And for you people, I have no clue what to say. You can see again. And you are me that took this right now. Shut up! You don't need to hear that in this day. I hope you die. I hope you die. I traveled for 25 cities with my pastor. People came to me and said, if you travel like that, you cannot have a good way. The Holy Ghost told me I can make you excellent in the crusade and I can make you excellent in academia. My GPA never went down. I had 3.96 GPA and yet I was traveling everywhere. The lesson that I learned there, no Bible school can teach that. Just sitting with my pastor and seeing how he do it. No Bible school can teach that. There is a lesson that you get a dimension of learning or knowledge that you only have is in our In after the pastor finished preaching, you take that word and say, I'm going to Don't do it, you will never access it. You can ask all you want to, you will never access it. Otherwise, you will really become like the Pharisee. It's a danger. A lot of knowledge, but not skill. It's dangerous. I'm telling you, brother and sister, it's dangerous. Don't go there. Best take a plan. The world. Amen. Last, last question on Zoom, please. <clears throat> Oh, the people that we minister to, if they want to be, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, we have had discussions like that. When we do an outreach, remember, it is not just sinners. God knows what He is doing. Many times in the outreach, they actually pass us. We have a discussion where I thought there was a pastor sitting there, and he was looking so because he was pastor, but something happened, and he just, you know, he got caught. Concerning this, this heart was not too much to the Lord like that. So when he came to the house, so he did. But when he saw what was happening, something energized him again. Something energized him again. Now he's not necessarily drunk us, but he made a commitment to go back to the Lord. So I saw the compassion of God that you cannot believe. There are many, many like that. Some of them are just Christian who have never done anything for the Lord. But when they see, some people get to the same thing and see what else they do. One person came to me and said, The thing that you're doing, that's what the Lord told me to do. And I never do. Thank you for doing that. Now, I'm glad that he said, Thank you for doing that, but I don't really want to tell you, brother, just go do what God wants you to do. God has told me, Don't just be a spectator, do it. Amen.
But yes, we, are, we do have to want to turn the Irish and people have joined the team even. Uh, yesterday, we actually received a call from one lady um, during the outreach. She was there and the Lord told me to ask her to come and help us pray. Tell her she's a believer for a long time. Man, when that lady started to pray, oh my God, power. Power. And then she started to sponsor the outreach many times, buying stuff to bless the people. So you never know who comes. You can run out of the button the girl was sitting there. It just came in. Just go to the floor and sit there all day to the floor. Not knowing that it's the one girl who is driving the right. And he sees what is happening. And he comes and say, I like what you do. I feel my heart to give you this. Don't give you what you do. Never think of it. This is the way the Korean church, they know what we do. They have 1,300 churches around the world. They do mega, mega stuff. But the Lord will come and do so small things. We love your passion. Come and preach. And they tell us, every time we do mega stuff, can you please come and help us preach the gospel? We come to provide faith. Faith. How do you get it? We met them at the Bible, at the Bible, we pray and that week. They came to saw how we're working, how we're working. We have a team that is going to Japan, it's going to Japan in April. We start to work there. Three of them. <coughs> the challenge was we never went to Japan. <coughs> we don't know anyone, but we still go. Guess what our God did? This team from South Korea saw how we work with them. They just said, listen, we have many houses in Japan, we will host them. Simply because we're focusing on souls and God will be one. Now they have place to stay in Japan. Food, everything provided. They just have to take the airplane. That's all. You cannot teach something like that. How are you going to teach somebody? <laughs> you have to experience it. Sir. If they give you the test, you know why going to control us? You blow your mind. How can we teach that? I told them many times about the spirit of might. They experienced in Honduras. They barely slept. Barely. They said they were strengthened. You cannot teach the spirit of might. You have to experience the spirit of might. And you can only experience it if you are walking. And walking to the point where you have come to the end of your strength. When you are weak. They will be strong. But if you only do stuff where you're comfortable, you will never experience that. So it doesn't matter how long I explain that to you, you never understand if you have the thing about what you want to experience. The Bible says you know you experience it. Not just here. Yeah. Experience. Amen. That's it for the questions. Yes, sir. All right. Praise the Lord. So thank you guys. Bishop Phillips, we love you. Uh, Mary Rose and the student in the Philippines, we love you. And tomorrow, we continue the training. And remember, um, oh, pick up my email. My email is, you can write my email on the chat. A -L -O -O dot Paul at gmail.com. Send me your outreach ideas. Your outreach ideas. And on Monday, we start. We're going to assist you in everything. And then some of you, uh, as led by the Holy Ghost, especially the Philippines, we will finance some of these outreaches. God bless you. Oh, thank you. You're welcome, Bishop. <laughs> Uh, I mean. Amen. Thank you, guys. <laughs>